Remember, the atomic mass scale was originally based on the mass of a hydrogen atom being equal to one atomic mass unit. This was later changed to the mass of a carbon atom being equal to 12U. This updated the definition of 1U as 1 12th of the mass of a carbon atom. An interesting coincidence is that an inch is a twelfth of a foot, originally a real foot. The problem is that different people have different foot lengths. To solve this, society chose King Henry I's foot as its fixed standard. In the case of carbon, it has three isotopes, each with a different mass. Carbon-12 with six neutrons. Carbon-13 with seven neutrons. And carbon-14 with eight neutrons. Do we average their masses and use that as the benchmark? The problem is the proportion of carbon's isotopes changes from place to place on Earth and in outer space. So the benchmark would depend on where we get our carbon sample from. As we need a fixed standard that's the same throughout the universe, scientists picked only the carbon-12 isotope as being equal to exactly 12U. All other atoms are then compared to a carbon-12 atom making it the King Henry of atomic masses. So updating an element's relative atomic mass is the average mass of its isotopes relative to the mass of a carbon-12 atom taken as exactly 12. What about the element carbon itself? What's its average or relative atomic mass? Not just the carbon-12 isotope, but taking into account all its isotopes found in nature. About 99% of naturally occurring carbon atoms are carbon-12, and only 1% are carbon-13. Less than 1 in 1 trillion is carbon-14, so we can ignore it when averaging. So carbon's relative atomic mass is very close to 12. It's actually 12.01, which leans 99% closer to 12 than to 13, as you might expect. The proportion of the different isotopes varies at different places on Earth and across the universe. A famous meteor found in Antarctica in 1984 was identified as coming from Mars because of its particular proportion of carbon-13 to carbon-12 isotopes. Carbon-12, carbon-13 and carbon-14 all look and feel like carbon and all behave like carbon because they all are carbon. For example, their atoms all make four chemical bonds when joining to other atoms. So they all bond in the same way with oxygen to make carbon dioxide molecules. This is because atoms bond chemically by sharing the electrons on their outside shells. So the number of neutrons in their nuclei doesn't matter. We can fade the protons and neutrons out here. To tell the CO2 molecules apart, we could write the bottom one C12O2, the middle one C13O2, and the top one C14O2. But why is only one in a trillion carbon atoms carbon-14? Where do they come from? They're made when a neutron is knocked out of atoms high in the atmosphere by cosmic rays from outer space, 
then bombards a nitrogen atom in the air, turning it into a carbon-14 atom. Like all carbon atoms, these carbon-14s react with oxygen to become CO2 molecules. then get absorbed by plants during photosynthesis. Animals that eat the plants, and animals that eat the animals that eat the plants, will also have some carbon-14 atoms in their bodies. Carbon-14 atoms are radioactive, which means that you're radioactive. By measuring the level of a fossil's radioactivity, scientists can work out how old it is. Up to 50,000 years. We've made a whole video on how carbon-14 dating works. Check it out.